Hey everybody, welcome to another long overdue dev diary. We're getting really close to starting the closed beta. For the most part, features are pretty well locked. So I'm really excited to be getting to this point. And today I'm gonna to be stepping through some of the core features in particular regarding what we're calling groups. So this is the current state of the start page. And you'll see it's sort of an integration of pinned bookmarks, which are the nice images up at the top, and then my library of drives, which I can scroll down through below. The full library can be accessed as well, which gives us a slightly you know, larger interface for exploring all of our drives, our bookmarks, and uh, recent downloads. So I'm going to jump into some drive creation first to show where that is in the current state of the build, and then I'm gonna get into the groups and show exactly how that works. So drive creation has gotten fairly streamlined. We have this interface for creating new drives. And when I click on that, it'll open up this nice interface for setting a type on a great website. And uh, you can choose a front end. And right now we have a set of pre-built front ends for you that are each categorized by the different type of drive that you can create. So here are your website front ends. Here's one for your files drives. Here's our group. Uh, front end, and then here is a sort of GitHub repo style of front end for code modules. In the future, we're going to make it possible for you to create your own custom front ends, which you can save to your library, and then they'd show up in the listing here. We just haven't quite implemented that yet, but that's coming. So when you want to create a website, you'll choose a front end that comes with Beaker. I'm going to choose this wiki front end here. Dumps me straight into my new Hyperdrive website, where we have nice built-in tooling for creating it. Oh my great website wiki and you know it supports markdown i'll save the changes and there you go so the front ends give a kind of nice uh, high level interface to interacting with all your content and you know building out the web page that you're trying to create uh, you can also jump directly into the editor to do this kind of work so i can make changes there save it it's all just uh, files instead of hyperdrive as usual basically what's occurring is that the front end is using the web api for hyperdrive to read and write the files and that's how it's able to provide this nice interface next i'm going to talk about forks forking is something that we've integrated into the tool set as a way to do collaboration and also work on development of a project sort of progressively you create a fork uh, to do development and then you can merge that fork back into the master copy of the drive to actually publish the changes so the flow is that you'll hit the new fork button and the cert info there, choose where you're going to be forking off of, in this case, the master copy of it, and then you'll set a label for it, similar to like creating a branch in Git. So I'll call this dev, create the fork. And now we're in a completely new copy, but with all the same files copied over into this new hyperdrive. And you can see up at the top, it's indicating that I'm in one of the forks, in this case, the, uh, the dev fork. If I open up the site info again, you can see the forks being listed here, so you can quickly jump between the two. If I make a change to the site, what I'll be changing, of course, is my fork of the original site, this totally different copy. And so once I'm ready to merge that back in, I can open up this interface again and click the diff merge master, which will take us into this interface for comparing the two copies, seeing what has changed. In this case, I added these question marks here, and then creating the merge. Now a nice part about this interface is that if you don't own the master copy, you can still go through this entire flow. And when you reach this interface here, this diff merge interface, rather than telling you go ahead and merge the changes because you're not able to, you don't own the original drive, it'll instead tell you to copy the link to this particular interface right here. And this interface can then be shared with whoever owns the drive so that they can actually review and merge in those changes themselves. So it kind of acts like a poor man's pull request or similar to like emailing a patch to somebody. It allows you to get into collaborative flows between different people. It is very simple right now, but it does the job. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge this change and then go back to my great website and see that yes, indeed, the change has been merged into the upstream. And now that I'm done with that fork, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. Okay, let's talk about groups. Groups are, like everything else in Beaker, another kind of hyperdrive website. The interesting thing about a group is that it brings in multiple different users to collaborate on one application. Now, if you've seen the previous dev diaries, we've historically been using a kind of a social graph-based applications layer, kind of a Twitter clone. We decided that we didn't really love the social networking aspect of it. It's still something that people can make if they want to inside of Beaker, but for us, 
Honestly, most of the team doesn't really use Twitter or Facebook, so it felt like maybe not the best thing to get into if we're not personally into it. I think I'm the only person on our team that uses Twitter. So instead, we decided to create this groups-based system. Now, the idea with groups is that you have the master drive for the group, and that's what we're looking at here, the Beaker Beta group. And inside of that drive, there's a user's directory. I'll open up the source code here, and you can see it. And Andrew Osheroff and myself have accounts, which if I go to the user's tab here, you can see both of us are there. Now, both of these drives are drives that we created and then mounted into the group. And so membership into the group is controlled by creating profile drives and then sending that URL to the owner of the group so that they can add the user. Once somebody is in the group, it's possible to make posts, comments, votes, things like that. You could tell this is a Reddit kind of interface. Uh, and the group software will look inside of each of the user's profile drives for this content and put it together. Again, similar to the social networking applications that I made in the past, except that rather than traversing a social graph, there's a set user list that participates in this group. As usual, all of this content, the posts, the votes, the comments, they're just files on our personal profile drives. If I go into one of our users here and then look inside of their drive, I'm now looking at Andrew Osheroff's files over here in the top left. He has a Beaker forum folder, and inside of that he has folders for comments, posts, and votes. These comments are simply markdown files. His posts are that go to files, which are a special kind of file we use that they're actually empty and metadata on the file indicates what he's linking to. And so these two dot go to files are actually these two posts. And votes are the same thing. They're dot go to files. They indicate what they are voting on and then whether it's an upvote or a downvote. A better way to explore these dot go to files is to use the command line. If I cd into users, Andrew Osheroff, Beaker Forum, and uh, finally posts. We can see the two post files here, again, go tos. And I can use the meta command to examine the metadata on these files. And here we can see much more interesting information. The metadata on the file establishes the href, the URL that this post is pointing to, and then the title. So some cool pics, that's illustrated right there. Similarly with the comments, while the actual content of the comments are just marked out files, and so you'll find the actual statement of the comment inside the file, there's some metadata on the files indicating what they're commenting on. So if I look at the metadata for one of these files, you'll see there's an href there indicating what this is a comment on. And I believe he has some replies in here. And so in this case, you can see that not only is there an href indicating what he's commenting on, there's also a parent item in the metadata indicating what he's replying to. In this case, he's replying to my comment there. All of these files act as more or less the database for this group. We use a function called query on the Hyperdrive API to be able to read all of these files and put them together into views. So if I execute a query using the command line here, what I would do is I would execute it against the users of the group, and then I would glob into it, and then I would indicate that I want to go into the Beaker forum directory of each of the users and the posts. And those globs will get matched against the different uh, posts that have been uh, created. Right now, only Andrew has uh, posted anything, but you can see that this execution right here correlates directly to what we're seeing on the page. If I want to pull out all of the comments made within this group, I can just change the target directory to comments, which will give us a full listing of all the comments made. And if I click on these, I'll go directly to the content themselves. The last thing that I want to share is something that we think could be pretty fun, and that's this idea of groupware. Groupware is hyperdrive websites and applications which basically use the group that already exists to add additional applications. Now, this is still very early. A lot of the mechanics are still being worked out, but we have an example application for this, which is the wiki groupware. This is similar to the wiki front end that I demonstrated earlier when I create a personal website. But in this case, this wiki is designed to read the users from the group that I was just on and pull content from there in addition to its own drive. So in this wiki, we have the welcome page and the tutorial page, which of course is still to do. That's all a part of the wiki groupware website itself. But then it is also going to look inside that group to find pages that have been published. And in this case, I've published one personal page for myself. The way this functions is very simple. The group that this wiki is reflecting is mounted into the wiki under the group directory. So if I explore in here, you'll see that this reflects the files of the group that I've been viewing before. And if I go from the root of the wiki to group, users, 
and then pfrazy index.md, we will see the page that I am looking on now. So it's almost as if this wiki groupware application is wrapping around the group to provide a new front end to the exact same content. And if we wanted to, we could have that content be shared between different applications. So if I were to go into the Beaker Forum directory comments and see this is one of my comments, if I view it here, it'll actually show up inside the wiki. So this is the advantage of having an open system like the hyperdrive network. You can actually access files from multiple different applications and leverage them into multiple usages. In this case, we're planning on using this wiki as a way for people in the group to work collaboratively on information. And this wiki is actually designed to let the users execute HTML. May or may not be a good idea, but it's a high trust group. So we think it's a fun way for us to be able to build small applications and share them quickly with each other and uh, experiment with the tooling in this way. So that's it for today's dev diary. We're gonna be starting our closed beta very soon. As soon as we think that we are ready to go, we're going to be going to a public beta and uh, you'll be able to try this yourself. So thank you all very much for watching. Let me know what you think and I will see you online.